do I even start? Hi everyone, my name is Kayla. Welcome back to Case and Shelf, where we talk about books. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the books that I plan and hope to read in September. First, I will start with the books that are commitment reads, and then jump into the MBR or might be read picks. First is an ebook that was kindly sent to me from the author in exchange for an honest review, and that is The Year Before the End by Vidar Hochstad. Now, this is the first book in a series, and from what I understand, it is going to be pretty epic. It's a science fiction book, and in this, 40 years ago, humans discovered that they were not alone, that the Centauri existed, and they offered the galaxy to humanity. With one year to go before the gate is ready, Zara finds out that the Centauri and the Martian or Mars separatists have a conspiracy in the background to split the solar system between themselves. This just sounds like there's going to be a lot of deceits, betrayals, some action, and of course conspiracies all mixed in there, all packed within a epic sci-fi. It also sounds like there's going to be some high stakes as the future of humanity is on the line here. This is one I'm looking forward to. It's about 235 pages, so it should be a quick read as well. I've also been keen to get back into some more sci-fi, so I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I probably should have started with the books that I am carrying over from August, so I apologize. It's been a crazy month. I don't even know where August went. I'm shocked that it's almost September, and one of the books that I am carrying over is Blood of the Spear by Mark Timoney. I talked about this already in my August TBR or MBR, and I'm about halfway through at the time of recording this, and so far I'm enjoying it. It had definitely has that classic fantasy feel to it. The characters I'm warming up to at this point, and overall the plot has me interested. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen, but this is a chunky beefy book. <laughs> the other book I am carrying over is Red Mars. I am struggling with this one a little bit, I'll be honest. It's just not what I was expecting, and it just has a lot of interpersonal drama, which is not something I'm too keen on, at least in the depth that it's going into with this. Now, I am going to try and continue it. I am going to try and get as far as I can. I'm still around the 50% mark, and I think with the audiobook, because I'm using the audiobook to help me get through, I've got about five hours left, I think, so I should be able to finish this. It's just going to be a slower reading pace, just because it is a bit harder for me to get through. There's just so many things to keep track of, a lot of interpersonal relationships and situations to keep track of, too, and anyway, there's a lot to this one. I am getting there slowly but surely. Another carryover and another review copy that was sent from the author in exchange for an honest review is Baden Hill by I Anonymous. This is book two in the Wars of Wrath series, book one being Gerzel. This continues from Gerzel, and I'm about 50 pages in so far. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm glad I kept track of the characters from Gerzel as closely as I did, because it's really helping me jump back in without missing a beat, really. And for those who don't know, the Wars of Wrath series is based on the Arthurian legends with an evil dragon called Gerzel. If you want more details, I'll leave my review up here where you can find the full review that I did, spoiler free, for Gerzel. This is supposed to be the continuation, the sequel, and I'm really curious to see what's going to happen next, especially with that ending that we got from Gerzel. This should be good. The next book is also a review copy that was sent to me. There's a lot of these happening right now, but September just turned out to be a crazier month than anticipated, and if I don't get to this in September, it will be read in October. Now, with this one, I do want to say it's not typically a genre that I would read or the kind of book that I would read, but it interested me and I wanted to give it a try, and that is The Sword of Mercy and Wrath by N. C. Cousies. I think is how you pronounce that. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Well, let me just read the description for you because I don't think I can do this one justice. Vengeance cuts a bloody path. 
Celine wants revenge on the wolf men that destroyed her family and her body. When the secretive order of the Golden Sword offers her the chance, she lets go of her past to become a fully-fledged sword of the order. Her pain drives her to excel at hunting and killing the werebeasts, drawing the attention of the leaders of the order. Renowned hunter and order inquisitioner, Soren takes her under his wing. Tempers flare during his extreme training, and as they grow closer, their tempers aren't the only thing that ignites. When she discovers that her childhood flame, Tristan, is one of the creatures she hunts, she must put her feelings aside. She is painfully forced to accept he has become a monster like his father before him. But when she sees him for the first time in years, Old feelings come rushing back, and she uncovers the dark secret of the monster that the Order has kept hidden for centuries. So the aspect that isn't something normally I would jump on is the romance aspect. I'm not much of a romance reader. I don't tend to go for romance books. I don't mind them in some books if they're kind of on the sidelines or really well developed in a way that feels realistic rather than fluffy or for the sake of the plot line. But I wanted to give this a try because there are a few aspects that did intrigue me, including the polar opposites of these orders versus the monsters of the werebeasts and the political scheming that seems to be going on potentially in the background with this. It also seems like we're probably going to get a strong female character, and with this being a debut for a self-published author, I definitely wanted to give it a try as well. So I'm interested to see how this one is going to go with all of that in mind. It is about 263 pages, so it will be a relatively quick read as well. I should also mention that this one is actually an ARC, so it's not yet released, but it will be releasing on September 16th if you're interested in taking a look at it. Another carryover is Dragon Mage by M. L. Spencer. This is a part of the Femme Aficionados book club that is going with Hannah Blackwell and Maria Might Read That and myself. We'll be having a live show to discuss it in October. A date is still to be determined for that, but I am looking forward to jumping into this. I do have it as an audiobook, and I've talked about it already in my last MBR video as we've been reading it over the course of a couple of months. Long story short, it's a self-published fantasy with dragons and autism representation and apparently awesomeness from what I've heard, so I'm looking forward to that too. Next, I will be reading another self-published fantasy book, and that is one I've actually hauled recently, and that is The Seventh Cadence by Jim Wilborn, which is book one in the Continua Chronicles. Now, this is a chunky book as well. It's just under 700 pages, and from what I've heard, I'm in for a treat. Many of my friends who've read it have really enjoyed it, so I'm really looking forward to this. Of course, there's some dragons in this. It sounds like there's going to be some reckoning with fate, an epic high fantasy adventure, action-packed awesomeness just packed into this book from what I've heard. Let's read a bit of the caption. After a supernatural and unforeseen calamity shatters the tentative alliance of the five realms, the Desarian Dominion has returned to take back their homeland and restore their oppressive regime. As the Dominion readies their troops for invasion, the fate of the entire world rests in the hands of a fugitive scientist, a powerful pacifist, and an unseasoned prince with little to guide them but their own ideals. With the freedom of a kingdom at risk, each must find their place in a world torn asunder. A high fantasy epic of war, found family, and a reckoning with fate. Now with found family being in here too, I am so excited for this as that is one of my favorite tropes. Myself and a few others will actually be buddy reading this over at the India Courts Discord. If you'd like to join in, I'll leave a link below where you can find that. We'd love to have you join in, share your thoughts while you're reading it, any theories you might have. It's all fun to share. We'd love to have you stop on by, but yes. I am so looking forward to reading this and reading it with friends. Speaking of buddy reads, the India Accords Discord is doing an official buddy read for the month of September, and that one is Shadowless by Randall McNally. This is another epic fantasy series, I believe. It is self-published or an indie book as well. Let me just read the caption for you and give you a few other details. 
What if the gods themselves wanted you dead? Shadowless is a fantasy novel about individuals born without a shadow. Now this is a fantasy book or a high fantasy book and just under 500 pages. It's available on ebook, paperback, or audiobook I believe as well. So definitely take a look. I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to join us over at the Indie Accords Discord. I'm really hoping to fit this one in if I can, but it's really going to depend on how September turns out for my reading. All right, let's move into some books that I hope to get to as well in September. September is just a crazy reading month for everything that I have planned and I'm probably not going to get to all of these. I'm certainly going to try and do my best, but I also don't want to burn myself out or get myself into a reading slump. So I'm going to do what I can, but I want to share these because I'm really hoping to get to them. They're books that I'm very excited for. First is the final book in the Broken Gods trilogy by Aaron S. Jones, and that is End of Days. I finished book two, which was Paths of Chaos, back in August, and I am so eager to finish this series. I have been loving it so far, and Erin S. Jones is one of those authors that is now on my radar and one of my favorites. For those who don't know, the Broken Gods trilogy follows multiple points of views and takes place in the world of Takara. We get some gruff characters who are warriors and others who are young and kind of just figuring out their life, their place in the world, as well as a retired inspector. The different perspectives and the world building all were really interesting so far. In the world, we see a bit of a divide where the mages are actually looked down upon and persecuted. This creates tension, political intrigue, a rebellion, there's just so much that happens in this dark fantasy series, and I absolutely love every moment so far. If you're interested, the first book is called Flames of Rebellion, and I am really eager to see what happens with the conclusion, how Aaron S. Jones wraps all of this up, and I'm kind of sad. I've been finishing some series and trilogies lately, and many of them are leaving me in book hangovers, so... I kind of hope and don't hope that happens with this one. <laughs> Another one I'm looking forward to getting to is Flames of Mira by Clay Harmon. Now this is a traditionally published book. It released quite recently in, I believe, July. And I was actually sent an arc, but it ended up arriving without any notice on the release date. And I just could not fit it in, one, because I had no idea it was coming, and two, it just, unfortunately, my my commitments took over at the time, so I just could not sneak it in in between. Now, I will be getting the audiobook for this as well because I love audiobook experiences with the physical copies. This sounds really interesting too. It's the author's debut novel as well from what I understand, and I believe it is about 570 pages. It's also the first book in a new fantasy series. Let me read the back for you. Born through life-threatening trials that bind chemical elements to the human body, Egg was forged in the boiling volcanoes of Mir's frozen lands. One of the most powerful known elementals, he serves as an enforcer for Magnite Sorello Adrian, cursed with flesh-binding magic that will kill him at the first sign of disobedience. When Sorello is overthrown, Egg quickly learns he can do far worse than what has been asked of him so far. If he can't escape the flesh binding in time, Egg will have to kill a friend and foe alike to stop his master reclaiming the throne or sacrifice himself trying. The idea of elements being bound into a human was really interesting to me and the struggle of someone either having to make a self-sacrifice choice or do terrible things. Yeah, that really caught my interest, so I'm looking forward to this one too, if I can get it in. All right, so that is a lot of books. We have some chunkers in there, a lot of fantasy, a lot of self-published books, some sci-fi. It should be a good mix of the month, and I have a couple others that I'd really like to mix in too, if I can, though I'm not entirely certain I'll be able to read them in September, so I'll leave them as a bit of mystery for right now and update you back in October. For the meantime, I'd love to know, do you have any books you're excited to read in 
September? Any new releases that you're looking forward to? Do any of the buddy reads sound interesting? I'd love to hear from you. Leave your comments down below. As always, thank you for watching and take care of yourselves.